you've probably heard the saying, money does not grow on trees. Well, I'm here to tell you that this is absolute bullshit. In fact, these are some of the things that society tells you and brainwashes you with so that way they can keep you poor. Because let's face it, the entire system is stacked against you. It is actually created so that you can become and remain poor and so that you can remain an employee serving society so that the big players continue getting big while you continue suffering. Well, no more, my friend, because change begins today. So be sure to strap on, grab a notebook and a pen, and let's dive right in. By the way, people ask me all the time, Bashar, I need you to answer my specific question. I have a specific problem that I need you to address. And let's face it, with over 3 million followers on social media, it is impossible for me to do that, which is why we've created the free Facebook community. We actually go live two times every single month answering your questions. So if you want me to answer your specific questions, be sure to find the link in the description below and join our group. Now, I don't know about you, but I was born to a father who told me that I should never partner with people and I should also never borrow money from people. And in my situation in the 80s and early 90s, my father was actually a successful entrepreneur in Iraq. In fact, he owned the second largest factory of clothing in Iraq. And so if he said something, obviously it worked. Well, until it didn't, because I saw his business career simply dwindle down in late 90s, and especially in the early 2000s, when the war on Iraq happened and when we had to leave everything behind and flee the country. And as I came into the US and was trying to create my entrepreneurial journey and get into my entrepreneurial journey, really, I found myself stuck in a very weird situation. You see, in 2013, I had bought a restaurant with pretty much all the savings that my family had had at that time after having lived in the U.S. for nearly a decade. And a couple short years later, I lost that restaurant to a fire. And fortunately, one of my unpaid bills was my insurance bill. So not only did I lose all of my family savings, but also came out of it with $150,000 in debt. And the weird situation that I found myself in was that I knew that there was a lot more out there for me because I was only 25. And although I had picked up two jobs, but I realized that in order for me to clear my debt, and be able to save up to start another business, it would take me tens of years. Maybe you are in that situation as well. Maybe you are in debt, you know, trying to get out of your school debt, or maybe you have other kinds of debt. Maybe you have limited amounts of capital and you want to start your own business, but you just feel stuck. And in the back of my mind, I had my dad telling me that I can't borrow money. I can't partner with people because they'll always you know, take my money and run away with it. Until one day I found a video by Grant Cardone talking about this concept that literally changed my life and has been the reason why I've been able to generate over $30 million over the last few years alone. But before I get into that concept, I want to shed some light on a mistake that you've been making. And I know that because I have made that same exact mistake. You see, we find a vehicle, we find something that we really want to get into. We love it. We know that it can help us accomplish our goals. And then what we do is we look at our bank account or we look at the money that's coming in every single month. And we realize that it's very little in compared to what is needed to start this thing that we want to get into. For example, in 2015, after my restaurant burned down, I wanted to start selling on Amazon. But then I realized that I needed about five to $10,000 to launch a product successfully. And then on this end, I had $150,000 in debt. I was making only three to $4,000 a month where most of which really went to pay down my bills and realized that I was stuck. But see, that's the biggest mistake because you should never start a business based on the resources that you have. Instead, look at what the business needs and understand that it's not about what resources you have, but it's about how much resourceful you can become. So the concept that I came across was this thing called OPM, which stands for Other People's Money. And as I became educated about that concept, I realized that we have been utilizing other people's money for centuries. It is how the Fortune 500 companies became what they are. It is how Silicon Valley companies have become what they are. It is the reason why the stock market even exists and why companies make their shares available for people like you and I. It is the reason why credit cards exist. It is the reason why loans, auto loans, and mortgages exist. It is the reason why it is possible for people like you and I are able to take out student loans and go get a college degree. You see, when you use your credit card and go out there and say, buy a lunch for $25, well, it is not your $25 that you're using. 
The bank has given you that $25, which they probably took from someone else. And if you don't pay that $25 by the end of the month, then the bank will charge you anywhere from 5 to 15% interest. The bank then pays the person who they took that money from probably about half a point on that money, maybe even less, and then they pocket the rest. So what the bank did right now is they used someone else's money to lend you money and they made money on that transaction. But then also you used the bank's money so that you can go out there and make purchases without using your own money. So the bank made money by using someone else's money and you were able to buy something without your own money. Let's take another example. Have you or someone you know ever bought a house or a car? Well, 95% of people make these purchases with a loan of some sort. For example, if you were to buy a house, you are really only required to put about 20% of that house's purchase price. So for example, if you're gonna buy a house for 500,000, you're really only required to put in about $100,000 of your own money. The rest of that 400,000, you're borrowing from the bank. And of course, for an interest. So just right there, you're exercising OPM, other people's money, because you're leveraging the bank's money to make a purchase of your likings. And in that same scenario, the bank has actually used someone else's money to lend to you because people make deposits at the bank and they take their money to lend out to people making 5, 10, even 15% every year. But at the end of the day, everyone is winning. So when I realized this concept, I started thinking, if OPM exists, if this is how billion-dollar companies become what they are, if this is how banks operate, if I am going to borrow money from the bank to make purchases such as a car, a house, using credit cards to buy just regular consumable goods, why not use OPM to build and scale my business? And when I made that discovery, my entire life completely changed because I did not need to clear my debt and then start saving up in order for me to finally build my business. I was able to build my business right there and then to a level where when I was able to, I then went back and cleared my debt. And that is the biggest mistake that people make is they wait to clear their debt and then save up from the little resources that they're getting every single month to launch their businesses finally. But it's really supposed to be the other way around. So now that we know the concept exists, what are some ways that you can utilize OPM for your advantage? Well, you see, there are two ways that you can do that. The number one is borrowing money. The second one is partnering up with people who have the money. And I can speak from experience because I have done both. When I first started as a seller on Amazon back in 2015, I actually borrowed $7,000 from my soon-to-become mother-in-law. Now, unfortunately, that $7,000 I ended up wasting on three products that were complete duds because I didn't know what I was doing, but that's a topic for another video. But after I was able to do that, I realized that Money grows on every tree. So I went on to bring on other investors into my business who were able to help me scale my business to a seven-figure level. So let's break down each one separately. The first one, borrowing. If you are going to borrow money from someone, what you want to do is you want to figure out how much money you need, number one. Number two, how long you need that money for. And number three, what is the investor or the borrower expecting to make in return? So for example, in my case, I borrowed $7,000. I borrowed it for 12 months and I paid her back about 7% in interest. Now, before you go on and sign and start borrowing money, you want to make sure that what you're putting your money into can actually produce the amount of money that you're at least going to pay back and obviously plus some because you want to profit. So for example, let's just say that you're going to borrow $10,000 at a 10% interest and you need to pay that back in 12 months. That means in 12 months, that 10,000 needs to turn into 11,000. But then if you invest that money into a business or a vehicle that's going to produce 25%, that means that 10,000 will turn into 12,500 in that same 12 month period. You take the 12,500, you minus out the 11,000 that you have to pay back the principal of 10,000 plus the thousand dollar interest. You're left with 1,500. That's $1,500 you did not have before and you wouldn't have been able to make had you not borrowed money. Therefore, it's win-win for everyone. This is a perfect for beginners. If you're just starting a brand new business 
and you want to get into and you have no previous experience, I highly recommend that you start with borrowing. Now, the second one is partnering. And this is for a little more sophisticated entrepreneurs or after having some type of a track record, and now you really want a bigger injection to continue to scale. The things they want to have ready for investors is number one, what is the vehicle that you're going to be investing the money in? So for example, when I was starting out, it was selling on Amazon. Number two, what is the expected return on investment? So for example, if I am an investor and I am about to invest $50,000 into this business, how much do I expect to get back on my money in what time frame? So maybe that is doubling my money in two years. Maybe that's making 25% of my money in 12 months. Number three, the investor will want to see your track record or what is the knowledge or experience that you have or support that you are getting to help you get the kind of result that you are claiming to have? For example, when I first started, I took courses and I invested in books and masterminds to help me get the kind of result that I was looking for. And this is why today we've created BJK University to help people guide them through the entire journey. The biggest difference between borrowing and partnering is that when you borrow money, Regardless if your business goes up or down or makes money or not, you still need to pay back that loan. With partnering on the other side, if the business does well, you both do well. However, if for whatever reason the business does not profit or it crashes and burns, then the investor will take the hit with you. So now that you are equipped with this knowledge, you might be asking, how do I start this? Where do I go? What do I do? What are my next steps? Well, here are three simple steps that you can take today to get you on your way to using OPM for your advantage. Number one, find a vehicle that's going to get you to your target goal. So for example, for me, I wanted to make $10,000 a month and I used Amazon FBA for my vehicle. Number two, you want to have a blueprint, some type of guidance, because I'm assuming that you probably don't have experience in doing any one skill. If you do great, if you don't, you want to enroll in a program, you want to read books, you want to attend masterminds, or you want to maybe have a partner with you that understands how to execute on that vehicle. Number three, figure out the amount of money that you're going to need to start this business or side hustle or project and make a list of top 10 to 20 people that you believe might have that kind of money. Now, don't think about whether or not they will give it to you. First, think of the top 10 to 20 people who could potentially have that kind of money. Those could be family, friends, they could be business partners. They could be colleagues. They could literally be anyone and everyone. And it is possible that maybe you might not raise the entire amount from one person. You might need to require two people or three people or five people. And that's completely okay too. And then you want to figure out whether if you want to borrow the money or you want to partner up with these kind of people. And now that you're equipped with this kind of knowledge, I want to give you the top three side hustles that I believe you can get into in 2023 so that maybe you can choose if you don't have a side hustle to which one you want to get into. So be sure to check out the video on the screen somewhere here, and I will see you there.